Chapter Twenty of the Boy Scouts Through the Big Timber. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Shasta, Oakland, California. The Boy Scouts Through the Big Timber by Herbert Carter. Chapter Twenty finding out how bumpus did it well what do you think of that giraffe demanded as with his comrades he presently hurried forward to examine the dead bear i said bumpus could do it didn't i questioned step hen why with the great run of luck he's camping alongside now that part of ours could go into the lion and elephant country of africa and knock over more old tuskers and yellow manes than you could shake a stick at but how do you know he did this asked giraffe as a doubt assailed him tell me who else could demanded the other oh i'm not saying they did don't think that giraffe went on but we happen to know there are a couple of men hanging around this section of the country meaning hank and pierre of course yes they're the dodgers now you see they just might have come up here found the bear holding bumpus up in a tree and took a notion to knock the old mountain bear silly just so they could look our chum over and take all he had. Step Hen was unable to hazard a reply to this, and so he appealed to those who ought to be able to decide. How about that, Thad? Allen? Both shook their heads in the negative. Give Bumpus all the credit of downing this bear, Thad remarked. There are a lot of things that go to prove it, said Allen. Look here, and I'll show you. See, here's where he knelt to fire, first of all, and I want you to notice that a dandy tree for climbing Bumpus picked out just alongside, and when he'd rammed in both charges only to see the bear coming full tilt after him like a house afire. Bumpus swung up in the tree. Is that it, Allen? And Giraffe looked wise as he said this. Just what he did, Allen went on to say. I reckon he had a stout cord fixed on his gun and could slip one arm through this so that the marlin went up when he did. All right? Ain't he the cute one, though? Step Hen murmured in admiration. Well, you can see how the bear clawed the tree, continued Allen, but he wasn't able to get up. Grizzlies are poor climbers anyway, and this fellow must have been handicapped by that injured hind leg. And then Bumpus, he opened up on him, didn't he? Giraffe cried. Well, I guess that's what he did, laughed Thad. I can count twelve empty shells here under the tree, two Bumpus used at long range, but all the rest he must have fired point blank, with the bear not more than five or ten feet away from the muzzle of his gun. How do you tell that? asked Giraffe. Why, here and here you can see the hair on the bear looks singed around the wound. That proves the gun was only a few feet away. And notice, too, boys, nearly every shot took effect either in the breast or back of the bear. The one that finished him was this in the ear. It penetrated his brain. Giraffe gave one of his whistles and then remarked, Glory! but there must have been a hot time around here all right i can just imagine i see bumpus perched up in that crotch 
and blazing away as fast as he could load what a circus it was and such great luck why that feller could grab the first prize in the havana lottery if he ever wanted to go down to cuba and take a chance he can sure do anything he got his bear bless his dear heart laughed step hen yes and just like he did with the bobcat only this time he hacked off the claws from all four feet must mean to have em made into a war necklace indian fashion observed allan looks some like a slaughterhouse around here giraffe said the bear bled from every wound they told us a grizzly could stand any amount of lead and now i believe it why at that close range them buckshot in his gun just tore in like a great big fifty-eight slug oh what a sight if davy had only been here with this snapshot box but i can see that hank and pierre came right along in observed step hen yes and looked around just like we're doing now allan remarked i'm some surprised that they didn't capture the skin of the bear the other went on bumpus couldn't take it off because that's one thing he hasn't learned yet but surely hank or pierre must be old trappers enough for that but allan shook his head they looked at it and quickly decided it wasn't worth taking he said first place bumpus had hacked all the fierce claws off and they're the best part of a grizzly belt i'm told then our chum had as you can see just about riddled the hide shot holes through every which way that's probably why they didn't bother trying to take the skin off the bear but did they keep on after bumpus asked giraffe i'm sorry to say they did admitted allan who with his customary alertness had been looking around and taking note of things that means we will be on the move again giraffe declared can't be getting away any too soon to suit me step hen said the things i'm sorry about are these remarked thad first it's getting along in the afternoon now and our chances of overtaking either the men or bumpus before darkness comes on are mighty small i'm afraid you see they've got quite a few hours advantage over us well why not make a torch or so and keep moving along even after night does set in suggested giraffe quickly for his mind was always inclining toward fire in some shape or style now that may not be such a bad idea at all giraffe thad promptly declared and i'm glad you mentioned it if we're not too leg weary after we've eaten and rested an hour or two we might try that scheme if it didn't do anything else put in allan it would surely cut down the big lead they've got on us and we might be close enough when we started at dawn again to get bumpus with the call of the silver fox patrol better than that even said thad if we kept moving right along tonight who knows but what we might have the luck to glimpse a campfire remember how we did that before and thought to surprise our chum when it turned out the other way and we got all the surprise from hank and pierre whose fire would this be do you think bumpus or hank's asked giraffe perhaps both was the significant reply thad made for unless they've changed their minds and concluded not to meddle with a tenderfoot scout who was able to kill a full-grown grizzly all by himself i take it that before now bumpus 
and the timber cruisers have joined forces like the lion and the lamb lying down together without the least bit of trouble because the lamb was inside the lion remarked giraffe dryly yes the chances are that they've bulldozed our chum and made him wait upon them like a slave cook their meals for them and perhaps they will tie him up in camp tonight, so he won't have a chance to run away. Step Hen fairly gnashed his teeth while drawing this agonizing mental picture of the further troubles of Bumpus, and even those who had the most faith in the fat scout's newly aroused ability to think and take care of himself could hardly see how the awkward lad might come out of such an encounter as this with any degree of credit being up against two husky and unprincipled men who had brains with which to plot and scheme was an entirely different proposition from meeting animals that acted only from instinct and often very unwisely but see here thad exclaimed step hen you said a while ago there were two reasons for you feeling sorry and the first was that it was getting late and we might have to camp soon what was the other why the patrol leader continued knowing that these hard characters are abroad between us and bumpus even if they haven't made a prisoner of our chum you see we're kept from doing any more shouting out loud. Just why? asked the other, dubiously. It would only advertise our presence to the pair, and they could lay a trap to snare us. Perhaps they'd make Bumpus lure us on, or even imitate his voice and catch us napping. As it is now, Thad went on, so far as we know, they don't even suspect that we're around. If we can keep them from knowing right along, our job's going to be all the easier. You're right, Thad, said Allan emphatically, and even the other two could see the force of his reasoning. There was nothing to do, therefore, but keep steadily along, trusting to their perseverance to bring them a reward in the end none of them dared to even dream that the astonishing good luck that had followed bumpus ever since he found himself lost in the big timber would not continue with him to the end the best they could figure on was that if their chum had fallen into the hands of the two husky timber spies they would be tired enough to go into camp soon after and make the boy do all the work of getting supper. And while they thus dallied, dreaming of no danger, the four scouts might be advancing steadily, rod after rod, making use of a rude torch in order to see the trail, and all the while drawing nearer the crisis. You don't think they'd be apt to hurt Bumpus, do you, Thad? The warlike step hen asked for the third time as they continued to press on. Not seriously, replied the scoutmaster. We know they are bullies on the face of it, but really cowards at heart. If they hadn't been that, do you suppose for one minute they would ever have bombarded us while we slept? as they thought with great rocks any one of which might have broken our arms or legs and if they got hold of bumpus just because he's a scout and our friend they'd likely kick him around a lot and make him knuckle down to them but i hardly believe they'd hurt him badly but no matter what they do they got to settle with bumpus chums sooner or later. End of chapter 20